Hello, my soccer universe. Reviewing one of the best evenings I had <laughs> this year, soccer wise. Spain beat Germany 6 0, which is basically the only thing that we will talk about. This. I will have to really try hard to not get guilty. Full disclosure I am from Austria. Germany is the big rival. Yes, it used to be Hungary, now it's Germany. And this is one of the best things that you can take. And the best thing about it is uh, the last time that Germany won, lost by six goals was in 1931 to Austria, to the Wunder team in Berlin. Uh, I think that a few weeks later they beat Germany 5 0, which was unfortunately the last win for Austria against Germany until 78. So, yeah. But then the last time it was Austria and Germany played, also Austria won. So, yeah. Um, it's not a good time for Germany, so let's jump right into it. Uh, Spain, Germany. I I think you could summarize. For 15 minutes, it seemed like an even affair uh, with Ramos having a free kick uh, uh, chance, uh, Germany having uh, one or two, where you thought, yeah, this could be an interesting game. Then Morata scores uh, after Ruiz crosses in and all hell breaks loose. But one downer for Spain happened before Fabian Ruiz had to come off uh, with a thigh in a muscle injury. I oh, know, a Canales, uh, Fabian Ruiz came on. Me. And he assisted Morata then. <laughs> and then really, I mean, uh, it, it should have been a rout. It should, uh, it should have been a rout already at halftime. I mean, it was only 3 3 nil. It could have been 4 5. Uh, there should have been a penalty uh, given for uh, Spain because I think that free free kick could have been a penalty. Or already, I'm not sure that Spain scored a second goal, uh, which I'm not sure how much it was offside. But you know, uh, Dani Olmo takes, uh, uh, hits the crossbar, and Ferran Torres does it off, makes it 2 0. Rodri, again, Fabian Ruiz providing the um, assist, heads it in 3 0 at the half. And then I think the only really uh, bit the moment is that also Sergio Ramos seemingly had a um yeah uh muscle in in injury came on off and and it continued i mean uh spain were having a field day germany not physically present not um in any way the midfield could not get any control of it the defense who was already shaky uh yeah was always caught out of position but i think it starts how uh, spain romped through germany's midfield uh, Fer um, Ferran Torres adds two more in the 55th and 71st and OER Sabal late on makes it the proper route. And yeah, I watched German te television and I have, have to say there's a, it's weirdly satisfying how A, uh, the German reporters then try to be extra tough on the team, uh, to call out every little detail, by, but at the same time trying to hide how hurt they really, really, really are. Um, that it it is it, just a spectacle in in, in itself. Oh, this is it's five nil against a German national team. This cannot be. This is uh, you know in that are um, then uh, saying yeah it's uh, six nil sounds kind of decisive. Uh, something needs to happen. Blah blah blah. Uh, what I found rather interesting um, having international uh, voices. Uh, after, after then hearing uh, German voices, international voices are all calling for Yogi Löw's head. And I have to say, uh, this is definitely a conversation that is to be had. After the World Cup, I thought, yeah, Yogi Löw deserves to uh, stay on. I, I was one of the few of those because, A, it seemed at the time this was just uh, some mismanagement and he had enough credit built up and built a great team. I mean, 2018 or at least 2017, you still thought that Germany has the best team in the world. And then in 2018, uh, it seemed like, yeah, there was uh, too much, uh, you know, the Özil, Gündogan case and, and so on. Too much unrest in there uh, so that this works well. And I think... Uh, by the time they beat Holland and Amsterdam in 2019, you thought maybe they had managed a turnaround, but it was also defense that was shaky. Where I think Yogi Löw mismanaged and where I think um, he maybe was too hasty is to say, okay, uh, Boateng, Müller, Hummels are out. 
because all three of them are now playing really, really well in the German national team, could really use their experience. Now they decided to go with the youth players. And yesterday, both Jogi Löw and Oliver Bierhoff said, yeah, um, this was the coach's decision, but I backed this up. Uh, we decided to go on this way and it seemed we are on a good, good way. And now we got really, 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 really smashed. And of course, this is what was the main focus in the German, German media. You should have there Boateng, Müller and Hummels because those are players that are have, have been there, have done that, have a loud voice, would not allow it. But then I have to say, Toni Kroos and uh, Gündogan also have been there, done that. Uh, and I would expect a whole lot more from them. Also, I think F after the game, I mean, they all said kind of the right things but were all flabbergasted and I don't know I mean they seemed upset but not too upset and I have to say one thing that one thought came in, in into my mind it is corona times we have an intensely tense dense schedule not tense dense schedule um, you're two nil down Either you put in now the effort and risk injury, as we saw with the Spanish team, or let it slide. That it then really disintegrates into a 6 nil. Yep. But I think uh, they did not want to put in the effort anymore. I, I really have that feeling. So, yeah. It's the biggest post-war defeat for Germany, which previously was an 8-3 against Hung Hungary, as, as I said, the last time they lost to uh, a nation by six goals was against Austria. Pretty, pretty, pretty remarkable. The other games take really, really a backseat. Uh, it also takes a backseat that Switzerland, Ukraine, and it only uh, ended, uh, was, uh, not ended, <laughs> was postponed because of Corona, because uh, there was, yeah, you, uh, I, I, I think first the Swiss authorities said no and then UEFA kind of confirmed it and that was more or less that. So yeah, uh, another post postponement. Uh, the fight for the, um, for the relegation between Croatia and Sweden. Yeah, I think I had, I had Croatia poor, poor Portugal on where Mateo Kovacic, I think, scored both goals for Croatia, giving them the lead. The decisive thing was the uh, yellow red for Rock uh, uh, right after the half. And then Ruben Dias, um, uh, Joao Felic turned her around. Kovacic can make another goal in 65th. And then uh, Ruben Dias is gifted another uh, goal. It did not matter in, in, in the end, although Sweden took a lead in France uh, because Varane deflected the shot uh, run nicely. France turns around before they have through Giroud and Pavard. Marcus Thuram having an actually pretty good game. And then uh, Giroud adds a third um, and um, Kweissen pulls, pulls back and exactly when Sweden wants to push for, for the equalizer, who would meant safety for them. Coman scores an empty net goal. So yeah, uh, basically sending Sweden down. Um, didn't see much of the other game, Luxembourg, Azerbaijan, nil-nil, uh, Montenegro beating 4-0 Cyprus, we said this is the game to watch. Um, I haven't watched it, but it was very clear early on, Montenegro is going to get that win. Uh, Gibraltar, Liechtenstein, uh, an own goal, hence Gibraltar the lead in the 17th, Frick can, um, yeah, and Frick can equalize just, just just before the half, but then there were chances on both sides. I think in the first half, Liechtenstein really probably enjoyed the majority of chances from what I could tell from Hallett. Alas, it was not to be. My Liechtenstein goes down. Latvia flattens Andorra 5-0. And the Faroe Islands get an equalizer in the 69th through Lonson. Uh, Guillaume gives Malta a lead in the 54th. Uh, you think they are on their way, and then uh, Jonsson gets the equalizer and the fairy islands hang on and are now promoted to league c so let's look at all these standings to see it in numbers group a3 uh ends france with a near perfect record that was on the nil nil against portugal at home um and portugal also really those two romped through all through a group and i have to say france and portugal uh my those might well be two of the top three teams in europe at the moment um i think Belgium 
maybe has something to say, has a little say in there. Uh, and as I said, uh, Sweden goes, goes down uh, level of points with Croatia, but alas, was not. Uh, goal difference is the decider. Uh, Spain, leapfrogs, of course, ge uh, Germany, and look at the goal difference. I mean, Germany before it had, had plus three, now they have minus three, and uh, Spain plus four. Uh, it is an absolute disaster. Although the German record by itself doesn't look that bad, we still have the Ukraine-Switzerland decider outstanding. Uh, then uh, in League C, Montenegro goes up, Cyprus goes into the playdown, and in League D, as I said, Faroe Islands go up, Malta would have had a chance, but uh, was not to be. And then uh, Gibraltar hangs on and uh, gets also promotion to League D. I think it will, I, I'm curious how those little ones will do. Speaking of which, um, I have not talked about it, but I think it was in the Georgia-Armenia game. Look at the highlights. Armenia, I think, scored straight from the kickoff. Ball was tapped right in. This was on Wednesday. Uh, look for that. Uh, it was on Sunday. Georgia-Armenia. Georgia goal right from the kickoff. Absolutely worth your time. Let me know what you think about Spain beating Germany 6-0. Uh, I think this was really down to uh, Germany being absolutely atrocious and Spain taking full advantage of that. I've seen that before. Austria losing in 99, 7-0, 9-0 uh, to Spain. Uh, so yeah, I've experienced, so I can feel with the Germans. The Brazilians will also feel now a little bit... Um, more level because now Germany knows exactly how that must hurt. So yeah, um, the Germans now feel how it is to lose by six goals. Anyway, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel because it will keep you updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.